Okay, so, um, right. So first let's draw a picture. Let's make sure we have a good picture of what our, 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 uh, our context is here. So, all right. So this is in R3. I'm going to do this just to, so we'll have bearings. All right, and now let's see here. Um, so x naught, y naught, z naught, and then plus delta in each direction. Okay, so we have um, a we have a. Let me draw a cube, or uh, not a cube, a box. Okay, there's our box. Uh, now the naming convention we made was uh, that um, S1 and S2 are the ones perpendicular to the x direction. Uh, specifically, S1 being the one where x is x naught. So that means that uh, back here in this back face, um, that back face is uh, S1. And then uh, this front face here is S2. Um, and then uh, likewise for the other direction. So, so that means that um, eh, this face back, that's S3, and then uh, that's S, well, I don't even need to do, I can just say that's S4. And then uh, likewise, S5 is underneath here. And S6 is this one up on top. Okay, everybody good? All right. Um, all right. So uh, now parts one and two, I think, are okay. Maybe um, you want me to hit the highlights on that, or is everybody happy with? Well, let me hit the highlights. Uh, okay. So the normal vectors. So let's look at S one. Order here. S one. Now its normal vector. Keeping in mind that we're talking about um, um, that this is the boundary of a of a solid. S1 has its normal vector, whoops, has its normal vector pointing, you know, outward, which in this case means backward, and so that normal vector in 1 is uh, negative 1, 0, 0. Yeah? Okay. And then, you know, likewise, uh, for the others, uh, let's, uh, let's write down, uh, let's do it for... Um, S6. Uh, whoops, why did I? Hmm. Uh, that one, uh, the normal vector, is outward normal is, is up, and so 0, 0, 1. Up and in the z direction, positive z direction. So, yeah. Everybody happy? Okay. The areas, pretty straightforward. Uh, see the. Yeah, the areas. Um, well, let's uh, let me just do one of those again. Um, if it's convenient. I'll take this one, and I can identify some of these edges. Well, that edge there—that's the height of this box. That's delta z. Uh, this there—that's uh, the what you might call the length of this box. That's delta x, and so um, the uh, area of box number four. Is delta x, delta z. Yeah? Okay, likewise for the others. Okay, let's see here that. Whoops. Okay, so um, those, that's part one and two. Okay. All right. Okay, so item number three. We assume that the vector field is approximately constant on S1. Okay, so it's constant on S1. The value of the vector field is given there. Um, let's compute the flux through S1. Okay. All right, let's see, P naught, Q naught, R naught. All right, well, on S1, um, the, uh, the flux through S1, I'm going to call it phi1. Well, I've got to take the vector field. Um, Dot um, the uh, surface area 
uh, the vector field was given to be constant. We're going we're to view it as being approximately constant. We're going to treat it as a constant. Um, by the way, I'm making certain assumptions here just to make life relatively simple. I, 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 there's a goal to this question, by the way. The purpose of this question is so you can have a reasonable sense of where um, this formula for divergence came from. So in class, I just sort of asserted, you know, from on high that uh, it's, you know, partial of P with respect to X plus partial of Q with respect to Y. Uh, plus partial of R with respect to Z. And I, I just pulled that out of thin air. And I just want you all to have a reasonably ballpark sense of where that comes from. That's all. Okay. Um, so that's the punchline of this question. Uh, okay, so yeah, so let's see here. So the vector field is P naught, Q naught, R naught. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, F dot N uh, times A. Sorry. Space there. I was thinking in a DS sense of the word. Uh, okay, so P naught, Q naught, R naught, dot. Now the normal vector was negative one, zero, zero. And then the area was delta Y, uh, delta Z. And so phi one is, uh, whoops, is minus P naught. Uh, delta Y, Delta Z. Anybody happy? Okay. All right. So we're going to end up doing similar calculations for the other faces. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so number four. Okay, so the points on S2, they're a distance Delta X away in the X direction, and... Um, so the idea is that, you know, if you're moving in the x direction by some amount delta x, then, you know, derivatives tell you how things change. So uh, specifically, um, in the x direction, so we're going to take a derivative with respect to x, um, a distance delta x that we're moving in that direction, so we multiply that partial derivative times delta x, and that gives us... Um, this gives us our estimate of how much r, that third coordinate, changes. All right? It, the the, uh, the value of that third coordinate had been. Uh, let me color code a little better. The value of that third coordinate had been r naught. Right? I kind of. Oh, yeah. Okay. No worries. Yeah. So the value of that third coordinate had been r naught. How much does this third coordinate change as you move? Um, you know, uh, in the x direction, uh, by an amount delta x, well, that term that I have circled in purple is our estimate of how much that third coordinate would change. Does that seem plausible? Now, th I mean, that's not a question. That's, uh, that's part of the given state. That's part of the statement of the question, I should say. That's not what we're being asked to do. So, the, so that's, that's a given. But I just want to make sure that's satisfying for everyone. Um, okay, uh, and likewise for the other coordinates, you'll notice by the way, um, it's um, uh, whoops, looking at the wrong one. Uh, how much does the second coordinate change? Well, we're moving by a distance delta x in the x direction, um, and so how fast q changes, etc. Same argument. Okay. Uh, okay, so now let's um, compute the flux through S two. Okay, back up to here. S2 is this face. Okay, let's see, I'll do this in uh, green, I guess. Uh, so phi2, well, we're going to take, you know, f dot n, that's n2, of course, uh, times its area. And let's see here, uh, the vector field, well, we were just told the vector field, it's uh, P naught plus um, uh, partial P with respect to X uh, times delta X. Uh, and then I'm going to just say, uh, you know, there's a similar looking term there and a similar looking term there. Uh, dot. Uh, the normal vector, now let's think, what is the normal vector? We wrote all these down. 
previous section, right? But you can remind yourself by and there's the picture of that normal vector, and it's mm, it's one zero zero. Um, all of that dot product uh, times the area. Oh, uh, let, let's write down what that area is. The area is delta y delta z. And you multiply all this out, and you get for phi 2, you get uh, p naught delta y delta z. Um, I don't know how to put that in parentheses. Uh, plus partial of p with respect to x um, times delta x, delta y, delta z. Everybody on board? Okay. Okay, so we got it. We got the flux through S2. All right, next part of the question, what's the sum of the fluxes through S1 and S2? Well, okay, so we just have to add up these things that we just computed. I need to compute uh, specifically then uh, that plus that. And notice that that cancels that. Yeah? Um, and so, therefore, V1 plus V2... is uh, just this one leftover term, partial of P with respect to X uh, times uh, V. I'm going to just call that, because that's what V is, right? Delta X, delta Y, delta Z. Is that good? Okay. Um, all right, next. Okay, so next says, you know, repeat. Okay, so do this with S3 and S4. Do it with S5 and S6. So, I mean, th there's several steps, of course, in there. Uh, one of the big differences is going to be that the way we're going to approximate how the function's changing, we're not, you know, in this case, we were moving, you might say, in the in the x direction, and so that's why we were taking partials with respect to x and multiplying by delta x. For these other examples, uh, let's see if I can... Yeah, okay, so for example, if I'm looking at uh, S3 and S4, um, the way I would relate, uh, you know, what the vector field looks like over here and what the vector field looks like over here, I'd be moving in the y direction by a distance delta y. So you're going to get, it's going to be a different, you know, formula for the vector field here versus the vector field there. Um, and the normal vectors on these two faces are different, etc. And I, this is, you know, a bunch of details. I'm going to let you guys do those. Is that cool? Okay. Um, but let me tell you what you're going to get. Um, uh, phi 3 plus phi 4. You're going to get a uh, partial of Q with respect to Y times V. And for uh, phi 5 plus V6, you're going to get partial of R with respect to Z times V. Yeah? Everybody believe that? Kind of a plausible assertion, I think. Okay. All right. Okay, well. Um, all right, so now, what's flux divided by volume at this point? Um, well, the flux, we just computed all six terms in the flux. Right? All six terms in the flux are, uh, the, oh, um, ah, I should have called these volumes. I mean, delta V is what I should have called them. Sorry about that. This is, uh, delta V, delta V, uh, delta V. So all six terms together, grand total, Flux is well. It's the sum of those three things, and so it's uh, partial of p with respect to x uh, plus partial of q with respect to y uh, plus partial r with respect to z all times delta v. So okay, well then the what I <laughs> when I've been asked though is what is flux divided by delta v? 
all right. Um, flux divided by delta V is this formula that we recognize as being what I, in class, just asserted as being the divergence. Flux per unit volume for this little box. Yeah? Does that make sense to everybody? Let's see now what we re specifically asked. Oh, yeah, so compare the result of this calculation to equation 645. Okay, let's scroll back to where we find 645. 645, wow, that's way back here. There's a lot of equations in this section. Man, that's a lot of equations. <laughs> Getting there. Yeah, okay, yeah, right, here we go. 645 says that flux per unit volume in the limit is that formula. Everybody happy? All right. I think that was the last of that question. Um, yeah. Okay. Good deal. So uh, now this is just a plausibility argument, right? I did uh, leave off some, you know, some little worries about. Uh, I mean, we made approximations for what the vector field turns out to be, and I claim that the the, the, the uh, faults in these approximations that I wrote down uh, go away in the limit, right? Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, the punch that would, if I had been more careful about that, then we would have had a more complicated calculation that would have resulted in the same punchline, and it would have been less persuasive, I think. So, anyway, okay. All right. Thank you. No problem. Mm -hmm.